Hi everyone, we are going to go through the P5 Science Water Cycle Worksheet. So I will be breaking this um, worksheet up into parts so that it, the videos are not too long. Okay. Now each video is broken up into, I will be grouping them in according to key ideas. So the first key idea is on water can exist in three states. Alright, so let's look at question one. Um, table below shows the property of three types of matter. Okay, so A has fixed volume, fixed shape. Now, fixed volume, fixed shape, we know that this is a solid. Okay. Now, B, uh, fixed volume, no fixed shape. If I have a fixed volume, no fixed shape, this will be a liquid. Alright. And finally, for C, uh, if there's has a fixed volume, uh, has a fixed shape, this will be a gas. Okay. So, solid, liquid, and gas. So based on the table, what can you conclude about the three types of matter? So let's see. C is a liquid. Now is C a liquid? No, obviously not. C is not a liquid, so this is wrong. Okay. A is made of iron. Now let's look at A. Now A is a solid. Iron is a solid. But based on this table, can I conclude that? No, I can't conclude that uh, that A is iron. Okay, I can't conclude that. A is heavier than B. Now A, solid, B, liquid. Can I conclude based on this table, just by looking at whether they are solid and liquid, I don't know whether this is heavier or this is lighter. So this is out as well. B takes the shape of its container. So let's see. Liquid. Does a liquid take the shape of its container? Yes, because the liquid has no uh, fixed shape. So 4 is my answer. Okay. Now the next key idea is on water changes from one state to another. So which of the following properties of water allows the water cycle to occur? So basically, what I want is water cycle and how it occurs. So uh, if you look through the list, water can be compressed. Is this a reason why water cycle occurs? Nope. Water has a definite volume. It's true, but it doesn't. it's not a reason why a water cycle occurs. Water is colorless and odorless. Again, it's true, but nope. Yep, answer is 4. Okay. The fact that water cycle can occur is because uh, my water changes from one state to another. Okay. Question 3. Identify two processes. So water to water vapor, from liquid to gas, there are basically a few processes. Either I, I boil it or I let it evaporate. So boiling, okay, so one seems correct. Freezing obviously is wrong. Evaporation seems correct. Condensation obviously is wrong. Okay, so let's look at process B. Process B is where gas changed to liquid. Water vapor to water, gas to liquid. Uh, evaporation, uh, no, evaporation is liquid to gas. So then, um, the only other answer is 3 and condensation. Yes, condensation is water vapor to water. So my answer is 3. Question 4. Now at 40 degrees Celsius, which of the following observation is correct? So I want 40 degrees Celsius. Please take note. Okay, so let's look at substance A. Now for this, we should draw... Um, like a line, okay, and to demark it at each uh, point. So this is 44, this is 86. So here, before the melting point, this will be a solid. So solid will melt, change to liquid, liquid will boil, change to gas. Okay, so this is how you lay it out. Now for B, this is 62 and 188. For C, this is 5 and 29. And for D, this is 0 and 100. Okay? So for each, we have uh, this temperature line. Okay? Now, this is important because this will very effectively help you uh, see which one is solid, liquid, or gas. Now, what I want is at 40 degrees Celsius. So let's identify 40 degrees at each of the substance. Where is 40 degrees? 40 degrees is here. I'm going to use a different color. So this is 40 degrees. Alright. Where is 40 degrees here? It's somewhere here. Okay. 40 degrees is somewhere here. 40 degrees is here. Alright. Okay. So now let's take a look. Substance C is in a solid state. So where's substance C? This A, B, C. 
Is C in a solid state at 40 degrees? No, C is a gas at 40 degrees. So this is out. How about 2? A is in a gaseous state. So let's look at A. Is A in a gaseous state? Nope. A is in a solid state at 40 degrees. It's out as well. Number 3, B and D are in a liquid state. Okay, so let's see. B, nope, B is in a solid state. Mm -mm. 4, A is in a solid state while D is in a liquid state. So let's see. A, solid state. Okay. This one is correct. A, solid state. How about D? D is in a liquid state. Yes, at 40 degrees, D is in the liquid state. So this is correct as well. So this will be my answer. My answer is 4. Question 5. Which sentence best explains evaporation? So basically what is evaporation? So remember evaporation is from liquid to gas. All right, And heat is gained because I need heat to evaporate my water. All right, So evaporation is a process whereby water gains heat. So this seems correct. But let's look at the other options. Evaporation is a process whereby water loses heat. Obviously this is wrong. Evaporation is a process whereby water turns into steam. Now some of you think that this is correct because you think that, I mean you know that steam is water vapor. But what is special about steam? Steam is actually hot water vapor. So please write this down. Okay? Because steam occurs only at boiling. And what is boiling? Boiling is at 100 degrees Celsius. So steam only occurs when water boils. And so steam is actually very hot water vapor. So evaporation, does evaporation cause steam? No, it doesn't. Okay? Evaporation just changes it to water vapor. So evaporation is a process whereby steam turns into water. So this is from gas, water is liquid. So this is obviously wrong. Okay? Now question 6. Diagram shows a glass partially filled with water and ice cube. What do water droplets on the outside of the glass prove? So if I got water droplets on the outside, what does it prove? Okay, so let's see. look at the options. Ice is changing state. Does it prove that ice is changing state? No. Water vapor condenses on the glass? Yes. Okay, so the reason why I have water vapor outside, it's because this becomes very cold. This is the cooler surface. Okay? And you know that evaporate or condensation occurs when the uh, water vapor comes in contact with a cooler surface. It loses heat and changes to water droplets. Okay, so reason is two seems to be a correct answer. Water vapor condenses on the glass. Temperature of the air outside is lower. No, okay, it's the cup that is lower. That's why when it condenses, it's the cooler surface. Water droplets come from the water inside the glass. Obviously, this is wrong. This is wrong because the glass is waterproof, so the water cannot come outside. Okay, so my answer is two. Right, let's look at question seven. The table below shows the melting and boiling points of three substances. Um, Thaman mix them into a beaker of water under room temperature. Okay, so a few keywords here. So room temperature. Okay, can't do that. So room temperature. Now room temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius to about 35 degrees Celsius depending on the time and day and the weather. Okay, roughly about there, so roughly about 30 degrees. Okay, and place it under heat. So I have this mixture of water with X, Y, and Z and I put it under heat now. So the part A, what is the state of substance Y and Z under room temperature? Okay, so once you see this kind of a table, again, we have to do like what we did for the other question. Okay, so let's look at the melt the different points. So melting point is 5. This is 67. Before melting point, this will be a solid. Melting point will cause it to melt. It changes to a liquid. Boiling point changes it to gas. Okay, so this is a very common diagram that you must always be doing for questions like these. So 20 degrees. And this is 2, 5, 0 degrees. And the last one is 40 degrees and 80 uh, degrees. Okay, so let's identify room temperature. So I'm going to use red. Room temperature is about roughly 25 to 35. So where's room temperature here? So room temperature is right about here. Okay, 25 to 35 is right about somewhere here in the middle. 25 to 35 is somewhere below here. 
because this is 40 degrees. Okay? So what state is Y and Z? So let's look at Y. What state is Y? So Y is liquid. Z is a solid. Okay? So that's what your answer will be. So Y is a solid, uh, sorry, Y is a liquid and Z is a solid. Now part B. Now, okay, this is a question that some, a lot of you are a bit confused. Huh? Farmer wanted to collect pure water from the metal tray in experimental setup. So in this setup, he wanted to collect pure water. So you're supposed to list the steps and explain clearly how this, how Thaman can achieve his objective. Now, what you need to take note is there are these three substances mixed together with water. I want to extract it and the only way I can do is to boil. Why? Because my boiling point for the different substances is different. Water, I know that the boiling point is 100 degrees. But you look at X and Z, their boiling point is different. So that means at 67 degrees, X will start to boil first. Okay, and when it boils, it changes to, into gas. At 80 degrees, Z will be the one to start to boil. And it will, it will change to gas as well. And only at 100 degrees, then water is the one that is boiling. Okay, now Y will take a very high temperature to boil. So basically, Y will always will be basically remaining inside here. While water, X, and Z evaporates. Uh, uh, sorry about that. So, like I said, so while it is boiling, X... Will, it will boil and will change to gas first, followed by Z, and then followed by water. So if I can allow Z X and Z to boil off, that means let the water vapor, let the, the vapor or the, sorry, let X, the gas of X and gas of Z um, escape into the air, and only at 100 degrees, I'm going to trap the water, vap the water vapor for water and condense it and change it into water droplets and that's how I collect pure water. Okay, so I mean it's a bit confusing so I'm just going to show you the answer and I will continue to explain it. So the explanation is wait for the temperature to go above 80, de uh, this is degrees Celsius, I can't really f type in the degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Celsius whereby X and Z would have turned into gas. Now then wait for the temperature to reach 100 degrees Celsius and then place the tray, this metal tray, above the beaker so that you can collect these water droplets forming on the tray. So basically that's how you uh, collect the pure water. It's, it's, it's quite simple.